Hello, Aquarius. Welcome to your Celtic Cross reading. What's up? What's going on? Show me. Show me that Aquarian Collective, please. Show me Aquarius. Show me Aquarius. Show me Aquarius. Like always, take it resonates, leave it does not. And if there's more than one energy clearly apparent to you on this board today, then you reverse those energies as you see fit. These are, after all, general collective readings, not one-to-one -one private, which is to say they may not resonate. Frustrating, but normal. Check out the placements. You will find yourself in there somewhere. What's up? What's going on, Aquarius? Show me Aquarius. Show me Aquarius. I like guess on the water signs, it's flannel week. I just felt like it. Let's get some. After all, we're in tourist season. Let's let's all just chill a little bit, you know. What's going on? Okay. All right. Eight of Wands. Mm -hmm. Crossing two of Pentacles. What do you say? What do I do? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> that's a that's a lot of thought over some communication. It's a bit much. To open up, to not to open up, to say something, to not say anything at all. Okay. The hermit's crowning you. So whatever this is, you got this. Okay. You may not see it right now, but I promise you, your experience and how to handle this, if at all, is much bigger than whatever the current dilemma is. Okay. Trust in your experience and your pathway. Okay. You have the wisdom. You have the insight. Yeah, you, you're a natural healer. So whatever this is that you're like, you don't know if you can handle it. Yeah, you can. You're showing me temperance of the past and the hermit that's with you to this day. These are all very strong influences with, that are with you all the time. A healer, someone who has the wisdom and experience to, to appreciate, to look backwards and see how far you've come. Whatever this is, you can meet it where it is. Okay? Exiting, a sense of strength. Okay, we'll see what that means. King of Pentacles, before, like I said, every, he's been showing up in everybody's reading. Before your sense of practicality, resourcefulness, um, something about your household energy, your personal sense of resources. We'll take a look. Your strengths. You can put up a resistance if you want to. You're an Aquarius. You have some edge when you want it. <laughs> your environment. Three of cups. Although you'd like to chill. Three of cups. You'd like a little bit more connectivity. Something that's a little more sociable, a little lighter. Okay. Hopes and fears. Eight of cups. Am I connected or am I not connected? Okay. Outcome. The world. Something might be cycling out, guys. What it is, I couldn't say. I just want you to trust more on what it is you have experience with and the difficult truths and lessons and things that you have learned along this pathway in this life. That's going to tell you what to do. You have ample experience attached to you. You have an ample sense of the ability to appreciate time and how far you've come. Use those skills to your advantage. So what immediately caught my interest, I don't think I've ever seen an Aquarius completely halt in their tracks over some communication like, what, oh? <laughs> you do a two of pinnacles over eight of wands job, but you're banked with a, I would dare say, buttload of experience that says this is nothing. What's going on? You got my attention. What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> Resistance opening. I know it's good for me. I'm going to close some stuff out. I'm going to open some stuff up. Okay. But... <laughs> And yet, for some reason, some communication right there in the opening has got you stumped. What's up? Let's get an eight of wands, please. Are you wondering, perhaps overly contemplating, if you're supposed to say something? Are you overly contemplating what your response should be? Like, what, what's going on? What's going on, Hefe? What's going on? Let's get an eight of wands, please. Show me that eight of wands. 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 Had a cinnamon. She had a nice little snack, and now she's all worked up. Death. Ay, ay, ay. The hair Oh my god. Nine of cups. Oh my god. What? Okay. Okay. So much to process over a little old eight of wands. What? Oh. You're going to bet your butt we're going to clarify that two of pentacles. I was about to say, we're not going to clarify all of it, but we'll be clarifying the heck out of that one. Death, the Hierophant, the Nine of Cups. Oh, my, my, my. Oh, 
A line of communication ended. That's clear. I get that. Therefore, action surrounding it, too. Your reaction is conflicted. Your reaction is conflicted. There's a weird sort of spiritual acceptance, this is how it must be. But there's another part of you that's like, that. I love this communication. I'm all about, or I was all about this communication. It's like a hair font doesn't know which side to be dedicated to. The commitment here to respect non-communication, either prompted by you or someone else, okay? Remember, communication goes both ways, in and out. Or to find a way to re-engage it, because it meant something to you. At a very personal level, Nine of Cups, you don't know which parts of you should win on this one. To kind of gracefully let go of that communication, or to maybe gracefully try to step back into it. Grace is the key word here that keeps coming up for me, for you. Grace. By grace, I don't know. Two of Pentacles. Let's see it. Let's see it. So, no wonder that stopped you in your tracks. There's parts of you that want to peacefully accept the exit of that communication. There's parts of you that would like to step back into it. No wonder it's such a delayed effect. You have to understand, Eight of Wands is immediate. It's up front. Boom. Two of Pentacles suggests, oh, nah. We're going to slow this whole thing down by months, seasons, or possibly years. So you can see why that caused me conflict in my mind about how to interpret that for you. Now it makes sense. And this is why we clarify. Two of Pentacles. Some of that Two of Pentacles, please. Some of that Two of Pentacles. The Moon, Four Swords, the Wheel of Fortune. There's the recognition here that time has passed. So, whatever this shut down, shut down some time ago. Uh, we're talking a year, possibly more. And it's kind of been with you ever since. Do you gracefully accept this or do you gracefully try to step back into it? And if so, what does that even look like? You know? Oh, well, isn't that the pickle? The moon, four swords, the wheel of fortune. So time has passed indeed, yes. And you've been healing on this subject very quietly. The moon here is not a secret to you. It's a quiet reference point. It says you've been quietly, on your own time, very private. This is very private contemplation for you. You're not discussing it, I don't think. About what, what does that look like? What, 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 what does that mean? You know? And in that kind of silence, you've been looking at some difficult things there with the moon. Emotionally speaking, what does this mean to you? Intellectually, what does this mean to you? What does it mean that you still feel like you can step back into this? And if so, again, what does it look like? Just, just theory. Just theory, Christina. There's nothing wrong with thinking about it. It's just a thought. It's just an idea. I have the thought sometimes. <laughs> you have. You've thought about it many times over, but again, it's very peaceful, it's very quiet, and that's the way it should be. If you're going to have quiet contemplation, and you need to learn things at your own time without being bothered, okay then, makes sense to me. You have ample healing experience surrounding you, past, present, future, is with you at all times. You've walked hard roads before. You've let time get away from you before, you know what it means. Let's see that hermit, please. Let's see that hermit, please. Let's see that hermit. It's like, which parts of you do you honor? That hair phone's really throwing me off right there, dead center. It's like he doesn't know which parts to honor. The ending of this, or how he feels about it. You might have some very prominent fixed earth and fixed water in here. 
You might be fixed all together, honey. All we're missing here is... Oh no, there's strength. You might have some Leo too. Ooh. <laughs> Imagine that. A quad fixed sign. I've met a couple in my life. I tend not to go anywhere near them. Um. <laughs> no, that's a joke. <laughs> that's a joke. But trust me, when you've met a triple quad fixed sign, and not just one element, like mine's a repeating three Scorpio, right? Uh, no, I mean all the fixed, you're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you get that sense of will, strength of mind, impression, it's my way or the highway, and it can be very imposing. <laughs> it can be very imposing. But the, there's a softness around you. There's a gentleness to you. Let's see that. Uh, let's see that hermit, please. Some of the hermit. Some of the hermit. Some of the hermit. There's a gentleness in you. Despite all the prominence of your energy, it's incredibly prominent. Um, there's still a softness in there. There's a gentleness in there. Uh, it's it's interesting. Let's see that hermit, please. The eight of cups. Uh -huh. The five of pentacles. The star. Oh. What influences you, and again, if you've gone into your kind of quiet, secret places, so this is not a surprise for the Aquarius I'm looking at. This is a known influence that you've recently come to terms with. You're saying, despite the misgivings, despite the emotional disappointments and the separation, Five of Pentacles, the star, you would still desire to walk a path with this again, because it means something to you. You may not fully understand why, but you do feel a certain call towards it. And there you are, the star. Like I said, it means something to you. It's uh, you trying to keep yourself separated from this at the emotional level has not worked. That's how you know at the end of the day it still means something to you. I know when people are trying to keep themselves emotionally distant from something, right? This is very water process if you're water oriented like I am to kind of shut down the emotional investment in order to disentangle from something, situation, place, circumstance, etc. And here we have the idea of distance with the five of pentacles that you're showing me should create emotional distance for you. You're saying that you've tried that, it doesn't quite work. When you're being honest with yourself, you're saying this still represents something of a desire and a hope to you. And it looks like it's a clean one, it's a healthy one. I can see what you told yourself in order to tell yourself to keep yourself separated from it. You're like, that doesn't quite fit me. You've tried to make it fit you, but it doesn't work. It doesn't stick because it's really not at the end of the day who you are. There's something about you and in connection to this that you've tried to accept it gracefully. I keep coming back to that word. What is grace? What is grace? What is beauty? What is grace? What is divine grace? What is God's grace? What is all that? And I, I, I keep getting that. There's such a gentleness on you. You've studied so many things. You've seen, you have such a high level of exposure. Open-minded. You are culturally, why, that is very specific. Culturally sensitive. Culturally sensitive, perhaps you speak more than one language. There's, there's, it's like you're saying there's all walks of life and I know that. And it's that insight, that, that awareness, that willingness to study and to see things beyond your own front door and beyond your own perspective that gives such a gentleness to you. You don't mean to impose your will or way in anything, but it's also given you a hard time trying to understand if you're, you see what I'm saying? It's that conflict of trying to be respectful of other people's experiences and what happened and what happened for you too? So that's what I'm saying by grace. Do I accept this ending? Or because Nine of Cups, the star, it still means something to me, no matter how much I've tried to distance myself from it, that I should step back into it. Such heavy contemplation, honey. Very heavy contemplation. It's, it's, it's beautiful contemplation. And it's sad in its own way. There's a deep attachment to this. You know, I'm not quite convinced you understand how to articulate it. There's something more about you rely on the flow of things in nature to inform you, as opposed to, say, direct, impactful thought. And if you resonate with that, you know what I mean, you know? 
And your own particular nature is telling you or asking you what is the graceful thing to do in this situation to accept it as it is or to kind of honor the fact that I still feel called and compelled towards it, fix it, maybe walk the road with it once more. Oh, it's all very deep, honey. It's very metaphorical. Um, this is really good stuff, man. This is good stuff. It's really good stuff. I mean, from my point of view. No, I know. You have experience in the past with healing. I know you do. I see it. Such a sensitivity in here. Wanting to be respectful, but also trying to honor what you feel. And I, I'm going to go ahead and do temperance here in the past. I'm curious about that. Show me temperance. Show me temperance. Queen of Wands, is that who we were trying to fix things with in the past? Queen of Swords, yes. You both tried to work with each other in the past, you did. There's something here that you, both of you, recognize trying to work with each other, trying to show each other temperance, trying not to overstep boundaries, trying not to step on each other's toes, trying to be respectful to each other at all times. You might both have a significant amount of Sagittarius in your chart or a fairly prominent uh, dose of it. Uh, that's not really the point. You both, in your in your past reflection of whatever this represents, you're showing me someone else. And it's actually quite an equal division. You really did try to meet them where they are. I have two queens here, banked both by temperance. There is a fair amount of mutual respect for each other's uh, spiritual essence here that's here. You both tried to show each other phenomenal amounts of patience. Um, there is a mutual sense of resonance here, understanding, insight, warmth too, lots of warmth. Whomever that is represents warmth as well as temperance. Maybe a little fiery, maybe a little creative, but still. You two knew how to really get it, but there's something here about being very careful with each other. Patience. And really kind of appreciating the idea that we're more alike than we are different, something like that. Huh. So you two used to have a particular flow where you were always on match point. Something disrupted it. And that would explain straight away why you still feel a certain internal nature, naturalist call or compel to, like I said, walk the path with this star once more. It meant a lot to you. So what do you honor? The ending? Or what you used to experience with this person? Which is important to you. But you haven't given me a strict definition of what it meant to you. I want to see your strength exiting here. Um, I'm not worried about that, but I do want to check it. I'll tell you why. Strength can mean all sorts of things to different people, which is why I always insist on clarifying it. We can use strength to pull and attract just as much as we can to repel and push away. It kind of depends on what we understand strength to be. We're either using it for our best interest or against our best interest. Okay. Let's see strength, please. Show me strength, show me strength. Something about strength here is exiting. Four cups, three of wands, king of wands. Hmm. That's not yours, it's someone else's, I believe. It's someone else's. I believe it's them. Their strength for this exited. Specifically, their ambition to keep it going. Four cups, three of wands. This person has pride attached to them. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. But there's something about their pride that recognizes the fact that the reason that they're unhappy is that they're waiting. So this is where they use strength for themselves, not against themselves. At first, it was strength to stay and wait for the emotions to catch up to you both, something like that. And you should know my spiel on waiting. 
don't ever ask and don't ever volunteer. This person volunteered to wait. And that's how they used strength initially, and it worked against them. They're actually showcasing me a perfect example of what I lecture on all the time. They used their strength against them to wait when they knew it made them unhappy, but they did it anyway. It's that king of wands, it's that pride, it's that ambition, I got this. So long as I am still find a glimmer of hope in this, I will choose to sit here and wait, and it just made them unhappy. So the longer we wait, the less likely we are to see the results we want. Okay? The results was, you know, being on the same page, four cups. And that didn't happen. So they realized this, and then their strength waned understood that their pride or sense of ambition was working against them. So it exited, and that's where they made it work for them, I believe. You know this. I don't know that you asked them to wait. Granted, your energy is very contemplative, it's very deep. But why were they waiting? Right or wrong, why were they waiting? You told me how well you two harmonized, and you were both ample patience, 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 patience. They were showing me patience, you were showing me patience, so what were the two of you waiting for? What were the two of you waiting for? What exactly were the two of you waiting for? It left enough of an impact on you spiritually and emotionally that you still wrestle with this subject to this day. I don't want to intrude, and if there must be a death or a silence between us, so be it, but... What about what I feel towards this? So what did you want from them? What were you both waiting on? So beautifully and brilliantly and quietly and patiently. What went from them having the strength to wait for this to not? That's a lot of time out of a lot of time. The both of you. What did you want from this? that would still have you wrestle with this question today. Let's see that King of Pentacles. Are we switching? Stay. King of Pentacles. Show me that King of Pentacles right there. Show me that King of Pentacles. Show me that King of Pentacles. Let's see that King of Pentacles. What were you both waiting on? And showing, but you both dressed it up as patience and respect. So careful with each other. So careful. Let's see that King of Pentacles, please. Two of Swords. Ten of Cups, Knight of Swords, confusion about how to take action, and what does that mean? Practically speaking, Two of Swords, this is where you get caught and caught and hung up. I don't think it's always going to be like this. I do eventually see a release of thoughts, ideas, and actions. Okay, there's Ten of Cups, there's emotional harmony here. Well, that's the idea. Am I emotionally harmonized? What do I want? What do I want to see for myself in the long-term picture or the greater scheme of things about who's connected to me in this life and why? Who is of significant value in my life and why? When you understand that, then you will know how to take action. And that's coming up for you soon. Practically speaking, with action behind it, based on thoughtful structure of what's important to you. And then you will know what to do. Okay? That's coming up for you. Let's just try not to get lost to that two of swords. Now, your strengths, nine of wands. You say it's your strength <laughs> to resist. I want to get back to that question of what did you want from this? What did it mean to you? You didn't show me a strict definition. You just kind of showed me the spiritual and emotional impact. And how you're both so terribly patient and terribly kind and respectful of each other. But this hits a desire bracket for you that feels both alien and specific to you at the same time. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> this, you're just like, I've seen a lot of things, Christina. 
<laughs> and some of you have been around the world and you have participated in many cultures, you might be well-versed, you might be respectful of other people's cultural, religious practices, believe, you might speak multiple tongues. There's something about that. But whatever this is, is alien to you. And, but also yours at the same time. So, <laughs> I, I, you, you got to show me some definition, Aquarius. I got to see what this is. Your reaction to each other is actually incredibly beautiful. But what crossed the threshold, honey? What crossed the threshold from I'm being patient with you, you're being patient with me. We're both kind of unofficially waiting on each other in some way to I no longer have that ambition or drive. I can't do it anymore. What happened? And uh, to be clear, I still think that's them, not you. Okay. Your biggest threshold here is understanding should I respect the silence or should I try to step back into the communication? And you've been wrestling with that one for a hot minute. Okay, Nine of Wands. Be like, but I can block, you know. Nine of Wands, oh, I bet. You know that Nine of Wands, you can either make it like anything in terror. You can make it work for you or against you. To fight that good fight or to block that good block. Mm -hmm. It just kind of depends. I just don't want you doing the same thing over and over again. That's all. Because that's what the Nine of Wands ultimately amounts to if it remains unresolved. No matter what your intentions are. It adds up to a whole bunch of nothing if you don't understand why you're blocking or fighting. Okay. All right. Except for you an exhausted Aquarius. Okay. Let's see that nine of wands, please. One more. Some of that nine of wands. Some of that nine of wands. Why is, why is the gentleness around this? There is so much gentleness around. Like, you don't dare... I know it impacted you. It's, that's not the question. Why is there so much gentleness around this? What is this? I want to get to that. That's that's really a sticking point with me. It's almost like you don't dare touch this. Okay. <clears throat> Ten of Swords, Jesus, Ten of Wands, oh, the Queen of Pentacles. You're saying I can take the hit I have done. I've done it before, I can do it again. Oh, honey. You're saying I can take the hit. That one's on me. Aquarius, honey. That was a big hit. You're saying not only can you take the hit, you can handle it. You've never quite recovered from it. Again, we're going back to that question of should you let the silence or the death between this stand or should you step back into it? Because you still understand in some ways for you. Oh boy, that was a big Aquarius moment. Something. I can take the hit. I've done it before, I'll do it again. It's not the best representation of you. It took a lot away from you to take the hit. Even if you felt that you deserved it, whatever that means. Whatever that means. The toll it took and continues to take is still quite high. There's something about that, even though you showed me the Queen of Pentacles, it's coming across as very masculine. I can take that hit. That's on me. I deserved it. Something like that. But what it did was it hurt your sense of self-worth. Trying to absorb this ending quietly. It... No wonder you're still thinking about stepping back into it because there's something fundamentally in here that damaged your sense of self-worth by just kind of accepting it.
something in that attitude. And that is an attitude. It's a strong one. It's tough as hell. But in that attitude, if I can take that hit, you left parts of yourself out. You kind of edited your reaction like you didn't have one or you weren't supposed to. Like you're not supposed to stand up for yourself and, and so you went against self-interest. So that's where I'm going to have to push back on you. In many respects, it's admirable. But also, it still caused you harm. What were you both waiting on? I know. Sense of self, individuation, nine of pentacles. Let's see that three cups, please, in the environment. Let's see that three cups, please. Eight of Wands, Ace of Wands, Eight of Swords, you're getting closer and closer to solving the solution, even though you say you can't see it. Yes, you can. I know you can't. Red. Red. Why is red impactful color to you? Red what? Red dress? Red shirt? What? Something about red? Someone's very attractive in red. Anyway, it's in your environment. It's within your wheelhouse to generate activity. This is a power that's attached to you. Um, three of Cups, Eight of Wands, that same Eight of Wands. You didn't know if you should respect the silence or try to step back into it right there in your opening. There's the renewed energy right there at the Ace of Wands. Three of Cups, some emotional connectivity that says I can bring this together. I believe in it. There's the hope. There's the shard of creative expression. Lights of path. Okay. Being able to actually see it, but feel it. And then your Eight of Swords pulls it back and says, I can't see it yet. It's there. It's developing. Okay. It is developing. When, where, and how you execute it, I don't know, because you can't see it yet. But the energy is brewing. You opened up with that, that question that was so beautifully questioned, too. What's the better or graceful thing to do here? Honor the silence? the death, or should I step back into this? Because I'm not quite done with it. And perhaps I don't like the way I did or did not represent myself when we last connected. You have such beautiful wisdom, experience, sensitivity attached to you that tells you already that anything's possible. You have that spirit too. My biggest thing is, this is all I want to know. And this should answer most questions. What were you two waiting on? So patiently, so peacefully. And in equal measure, too. You mirrored each other. In this interim, did you discover what you wanted from this? I have but one clue. A couple, actually. There is a sense of wish fulfillment in here that suggests 
you would still pull this towards you because you understand that you love it in some way that you would love yourself. But are you loving this situation or person by trying to open back up towards it? Or would it be best to leave it alone for those same reasons? Could you? Mm -hmm. Heal? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Despite the emotional trying to keep ourselves emotionally distant, it still calls to us in a particular way that's unique to you. Okay. So you are getting closer and closer to answering that question. But um, you won't fully reach for it until you can see it. Eight of Swords. The second this drops, this will have a chance to express itself. Okay? But there's that Eight of Cups, hopes and fears. What if it remains distant and has to stay that way? I can't help but wonder, this isn't the biggest piece by far that's kept you at bay. Other than what does respect of one's wishes and the other person's wishes, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Honey, all I said was that they stopped waiting for you. I didn't say that they stopped loving you. <laughs> Something to think about. Eight of Cups. Some of the Eight of Cups, some of the Eight of Cups, some of the Eight of Cups. Hopes and fears. There's a big, big old, big old difference between I can't wait anymore and I can't wait anymore because I don't love you anymore. They just showed me disappointment by waiting. Not a lack of love. They had an ambition to stay put with you for as long as they humanly could until they couldn't. Something to think about. Eight of Cups, some of the Eight of Cups, some of the Eight of Cups, some of the Eight of Cups. Once more, I'm not casting judgment, blame, or assigning roles. You never really told me why. You just launched into this is where it is. Let's see the Eight of Cups, please. Judgment, the sun, the chariot. You don't want to get your hopes up. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You know, Eight of Cups. I, I can see where you had to practice emotional distance to keep yourself away from this. That way you didn't actually really have to fully answer the question. Um, like I said, that's coming through that question. The answer to it is coming. <laughs> okay. But uh, it would mean a lot for you. It would mean a lot to you if this came back through. That they'd have to turn back around. That's a judgment that's not your call, and you know that. Okay. Judgment, the sun, the chariot. Um, there's something that you recognize and this energy, this connection to this person's energy that you reckon is rather like a strong gust of wind. <laughs> when it blows through, oh boy, you know. And I know I've said this to other people before. It's I, I, When you get that kind of powerhouse of energy that comes like that, it's a really strong force of wind that pushes on you and pushes on you. And it means well. It wants to love you. It wants to put sun on you, right? <laughs> it wants to make you happy. It wants to go towards you. Chariot, sun, chariot, sun. You know, and it's like wind. And you're that person. You're either like, bring it on. And you have your arms out in the wind. And it's just blowing you backwards like a kite. And you're like, yes, I'm being lifted. Or you're that person that's like, this is too much. And you're trying to brace against that wind. Um, you know, you kind of wish that you could open yourself up like a kite to that energy again and just get hit with it full blast. Because um, it is strong. It does have a strong sense of movement. <laughs> and 
it comes bursting with sunshine too, so that doesn't hurt, right? Um, you know, so that depends. Do you want to open up like a kite and get hit with that? You know? <laughs> you don't know if you should hope or fear for that and if they would respond because you're saying it's the decisions kind of out of your hands. But you seem to know it's on you to step into communication in order to invite that in. Hopes and fears. That's a real thing, guys. Okay? What will you do? The world. And in this case, it doesn't matter if the world's this way, this way, this way, inside out, doesn't matter. In this context, you can either fully close it, reopen it, you name it. I would just suggest, if you choose to re-engage with that, don't step back into what caused the break. Okay? We need to have learned things, and we need to have grown, otherwise we repeat cycles. I don't want you to ever be in a position where you feel like you have to take that one ever again. Okay? Because parts of you to this day haven't fully recovered. All right? Um, this is very specific. It's very heavy. And you having to keep all that pain and frustration to yourself and feeling like you had to. It went from being brave to really taking away. There's something about that that you didn't push back on it. You had to show forcible resistance to keep it to yourself. It, it cost you a lot to exercise this. So I don't want you to re-engage with what, if, if you could ever be in that position again, I don't want that for you. So if you're gonna step into this, know that you're doing it, okay? And if you're gonna close it out and respect that silence, then that needs to stand as well, okay? Um, let's see the world, please. Some of the world, some of the world. Tarot does not dictate action, you do. Tarot is the proof of choice, not the absence of it. I want everyone to make the decisions that are best for them. So if you say no, then it's a no. If you say yes, then it's yes. If you say it's a yes with conditions, there you go. Just so long as you know it's right for you. All right? But you're right. This is going to require participation. And we cannot, uh, we cannot guarantee results. All we can do is speak for ourselves. Okay? Okay. Let's see that world here. Some of the world, some of the world, some of the world. <laughs> There's something about that person's energy <laughs> that makes you kind of want to try. It's like, uh, man, I would love to be hit by that wind again. Something like that. It's so strong. It is so strong. Okay. Four of cups, five of cups, eight of pentacles. Guess who's back? Well, <laughs> we are choosing at some point. I don't know when you relinquished the communication. I told you when the Eight of Swords stopped. This goes through. Okay. You understand the consequences. You understand what's at stake. You understand that it takes to, it's their choice to participate. You're correct. A thousand percent. Thank you for honoring choice. You made that very clear, your personal sensitivity. You understand and respect the, pack, the fact that people have free will. The only reason I see you questioning that silence is because part of you doesn't fit to it. And that's the part of you that never spoke up for it, I believe. And that's what hurt you the most. I understand that you probably thought you were doing the brave thing at the time. But in trying to insist upon or respect the silence of this, you kept disrespecting what you felt too and what it is that you needed to do too. That's where it cost you. I don't think you want to pay that bill anymore. Uh, there's something here we'd like to bring forward, if nothing else, other than perhaps bury the hatchet or to generate goodwill activity while you can. <clears throat> so I said that world is, it can stand in a couple ways. So that four of cups, that was attached to that exiting energy. Over here, five of cups, that's, I believe, both of your combined pains and disappointments. 
Ow. Lots of it. It's not just you, it's them too, of course. You were both hurt, you were both disappointed, you both have natural grievances that should be discussed. But uh, in opening that door, we actually closed this out. I see two people choosing to work through this. So, how badly do you want to open yourself up like a kite? You're like, I want all the wind. I want all the sun. But you know, there's only one thing <laughs> you didn't answer. <laughs> what were you two so patiently waiting on and so careful not to step on each other's toes? You got saved by the bell, homie. Mm -hmm. Did not feel like 40 minutes to me. Not at all. Not at all. Winter's dream, the gestation period, and you are coming out of it now. Number 63. The just, excuse me, gestation period, digestion period, whatever it is. Winter's dream. You did most of your contemplation. Um, it's it, lost in space. Yeah. Needing direction. Okay. Like I said, we're coming out of that. Number 36. And then, of course, the Garden of Venus. Someone else pulled this as well. Um, I want to say it was Cancer. But the Garden of Venus. Understanding what's worth abundance. Where you should be. What is worth your time, energy, and effort. What is it that is worth flourishing? It's beautiful. It's resplendent. It's relaxing. It's gorgeous. It's, it's everything. Okay. Okay. 36. Mirroring numbers. I just now saw that. The mirroring numbers here. 36, 63. Yeah, no, I know you two are mirroring each other. What you went through, in a way, is what they went through. Struggling with very similar things as you. One of you needed time to digest all this. Another one of the, the other person felt like they did time out in space and they just lost sight of direction. Um, but you're both, it looks like, coming upon a resting point. Okay. Anyway, Aquarius, I hope this helps you. Put in the comments. Take care. Be well.